So far, in our Louisiana series, we've met some incredible wildlife, especially reptiles. But the same warm and wet conditions that make this state a reptile paradise also create the perfect habitat for amphibians to thrive. Among these are dozens of salamander species, which can be found with a little bit of searching and a little bit of luck. Well, it's actually been flipped. That's been pointing for me, but that doesn't mean that it won't be. Oh, shoot. Yeah. No, no, no. Here, buddy. Oh, uh, it's a difficult find. There we go. No? There he is, there he is. All right, hang on. I gotta catch him. Look at that. Look at the log back. That guy is, is a adorable, whoa, sandy little three-lined salamander. This is a species I don't even think we get at all back in North Carolina. We do get two lines, but I don't think we get three lines at all. This is a pretty standard little plethodon salamander, one of the woodland salamanders. It has that pretty classical body shape, slender. You have that long tail. As you can see, this log isn't too close to water. We have some probably about 15 yards down that way. Uh, but actually, this is sandy soil, still moist soil, but but sandy, and that's one thing that these three-line salamanders do quite well in. Uh, now, Louisiana, of course, we're really close to sea level, so these are quite tolerant of, of these kind of habitats, whereas many of the plethodons back at home, like a slimy salamander, wouldn't put up with the soil. Uh, but just like the two lines back at home and many other plethodons, uh, these little guys are just insectivores. They spend most of their lives under logs like this, hunting invertebrates. Uh, just like the other woodland salamanders as well, it is really important their skin stays moist. I'd like to have my hands a little more moist, but I think since he was under this log and he wasn't moist to begin with, we're probably okay. But that's just a really cute little salamander there. You know, if anything came under that log and got, got a hold of him, I mean, he could be food for pretty much anything out here. Uh, but they are still important. They do eat those little mosquito babies. And while it's not the red salamander we're looking for, it's still a nice little find. Really cute. All right, guys, let's get this little animal back under his log. It's always important that you return salamanders right back to where you found them. He's under that log, he can stay moist and safe from predators. Awesome little find. We'll keep looking for reds. Get him, get him. All right. Got him. Nice. Yep. Heck yeah. Yep, yep. yep. That's a black <laughs> racer. <laughs> Jeez. He's an aggressive okay, don't one, too. Open. Don't open your mouth. He could have bit my face right there if you want to. Yeah. Well, that's a black racer. Uh, this is a pretty common snake. Ben's filmed them before. I've filmed them before. But a really cool snake to find on this little trail. Super aggressive there. Colubra. Don't bite. Stop it. Stop it. I'm but I'm hungry. Him. He's looking at me. I want him to look at the camera for you guys. He's got a black belly. I've noticed in this area... Oh, oh. oh, he chomps me right there. <laughs> I'll show you the bite in a second. You know, I get bit by these snakes all the time. Racers probably bite me than any more than any other snake possible. Yep, see, they look straight back at you. Okay, that's unpleasant. He got my finger. Yeah, so that's going to bleed quite a bit right there. I'm gonna, yeah. I don't want to hold you by the head. I want to show you to everybody. Dude, can you not bite my fingers? So, black racers are a colubrid snake. Dude, stop. You're biting yourself now. Could you move the camera a little bit so he looks at you? Yeah, Let's yeah. Shake it up and down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Dude, oh, man, he's aggressive. Right, you know what? I'm getting annoyed. He's biting me a lot. <laughs> and himself. Um, and the camera. Ah, oh, dude. He has the munchies. Dude, okay. I'm holding him like this. I'm tired of getting bit. I don't yep. like it. It does hurt a little bit, but it's non-venomous, so it's not going to be much of a problem to me. Uh, I'm going to put him back down. <laughs> And uh, we'll continue looking for something for Ben to film. Heck, but, look uh, at this thing. Cool snake. This thing is heckin' angry. Heckin' angry. See you, bud. Goodbye. Oh, and check this out. But what uh, does that look this like? This is blood. I get bit by these guys all the mm. time. But you can't see it. Once you wipe the blood off, there's not really much of a mark that it leaves. And he got you, though. Yeah, he <laughs> gnawed. I, I kind of let him, unfortunately. I probably shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. I don't do that on my channel. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't fight me here. I'm just like, oh, heck Oh, well, whatever. Oh, heck We'd already seen two cool herps, but I really wanted to find my very first mud salamander. So, Zach took me to a wet spot with some nice logs, and after a bit of flipping, hard work paid off. Oh shoot, shoot, there's one, there's one. Hey, come here buddy, come here. Guys, I think this is a legitimate, it is, look at that. That is the mud salamander, that is what we have been after 
under these lugs. Check this guy out. Look okay. how pretty that salamander is. Holy cow. So these are actually supposed to be found in North Carolina. I've never seen one. They're really rare. But they are one of the largest salamanders that you do get in North Carolina at full size. These guys can get up to around seven inches long. This is a pretty darn big one. He maybe has an, an inch or so left to grow before he is considered maxed out. Now mud salamanders are very similar to other members of the Desbognathus genus. Oftentimes you will find these fully submerged in water. As you can see that log we just put them under has plenty of water under it and he was actually sitting in a little puddle um, and these guys really are only found right up alongside water. Usually streams but obviously right here muddy spots that's where they get the name from the mud salamander. Now a lot of you if you've seen spring salamanders think that this does look like a spring salamander and they are quite similar however they have a slightly different head shape these guys are also a little more stocky and they do have a kind of darker body tone usually now just like any salamander you're going to get lots of color variation among different individuals in different regions but i would say this is a pretty standard mud salamander now just like other salamanders they are mostly insectivorous so any kind of invertebrate they find under these logs they will take uh, they especially love worms just because they're real slimy, go down really easily. Uh, however, these are also uh, predatory towards other salamanders. So if something small like a two-line salamander or a little slimy or a little dusky salamander could definitely be eaten by a mud salamander of this size. And that makes them really important to these kind of subterranean ecosystems. Uh, there's not very many salamanders that get this large out here and they do help keep populations of invertebrates in check and especially that's important to us because mosquito babies will often be laid under these logs and these guys will just munch on them all day long before they can ever hatch and bite you. Now they do have plenty of natural predators as well. I mean this is just a little gummy lizard. It has pretty much no defense other than being under a log and that kind of mucus it excretes is pretty slimy so maybe you can get away that way. Uh, but raccoons, birds, opossums, domestic dogs would, you know, go after these. Any, any, really any carnivore or omnivore that can get their hands on this will eat it. It's just a little gummy protein snack for them. But that mucus layer is extremely important. As you can see, my hands are really moist right now. And it's really important that if you find these salamanders and want to handle them, you do keep some moisture or mud in between your skin and the salamander because your skin oils can actually disrupt that mucus layer which helps these guys breathe uh, and it can disrupt their gas exchange which could put their health at serious risk. Well guys this has been a really awesome salamander encounter. I feel pretty lucky we found this animal. We're going to get it right back under the log. So he'll chill under here probably all day. Staying nice and moist and predator free. All right, everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the mud salamander and free line salamander. If you did enjoy, please leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.